my next little tip is the Harvest Right freeze dryer uses a number 12 JIC fitting here on the pump and back here on the freeze dryer. Now it's a number 12 because each unit in a JIC is a sixteenth of an inch and there are 12 sixteenths of an inch and three quarters inch and so that's where it comes up with a number 12. Now sometimes this face can get damaged here or here and if that happens you're going to have a problem with vacuum leaks. The female side of the JIC fitting is also flared but if you look down in here Harvest Right, and I wouldn't want to call this proprietary, but they have a little O-ring in their flare fitting. And I have looked everywhere, but I cannot find a flare fitting like this that has an O-ring. So I don't know where Harvest Right gets them, but like I said, it's pretty much proprietary. These fittings can be damaged if they're tightened too tight. And with the number 12 fitting, it should only be tightened one face to one half face of a turn and I've gone over that in other videos. If for some reason this face here or here would be damaged instead of having to go through all the grief of getting replacement parts from Harvest Right, there's something else you can do. This is a number 12 JIC crush washer. If for some reason your fitting is damaged and you can't make a vacuum this JIC fitting basically fits over the old fitting just like that. Because it's a nice soft copper washer, it will conform to the surface of both sides, both the male side and the female side. So if you have a damaged surface, this might be what you need to make a quick repair rather than having to change out your fittings. And these can cost anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar, and you can generally buy them in any shop that makes or repairs or has hydraulic hoses and parts. This is my freeze dryer setup. So in addition to the freeze dryer itself, I also bought a cart down here from Home Depot for $160. Okay, I think this is my new Father's Day gift. I think it's time to get rid of my milk cartons and move to a cart. I got this from Home Depot, so we'll have to see how it goes. First impressions, some assembly required. Ready, steady, go. Not bad for a one-eyed fat man. There are cheaper carts you can buy, but I prefer this cart because it allowed me to put my freeze dryer and my vacuum pump side by side at the same elevation. Uh, other things that you might want to think about is down here I have a fan that on warmer days when I kept my freeze dryer out in the garage I had this fan mounted behind my vacuum pump just to help keep it cool. I've had my freeze dryer now for three years and I still have the original uh, standard green pump so to speak. Uh, it's running well. I haven't had any problems with it. I still have the original filter device that Harvest Right first came out with several years ago. This is no longer available. They now have a filter assembly more similar to the Brita Pitcher uh, filter assembly. One thing I do say about my vacuum pump, although it really is required, I change the oil in it after every single batch. One of the problems with freeze drying is getting water into the vacuum pump. Water does not belong in vacuum pumps, so I take every and make every effort to, to drain it to get the water out. Uh, the reason I have this little uh, piece of paper, this is actually freezer paper with the plastic side facing out. The reason I have this here is because sometimes when you turn on your vacuum pump until it comes up to full vacuum you'll have a little bit of uh, oil vapor that will waft out of the muffler assembly and I just have this up against the wall so that I don't get any oil residue against the wall. When it's out in my garage during uh, nine months out of the year there's not a problem with it.
my next hint or tip is really more of a suggestion but I got this cart from Home Depot it cost about $160 it's a little bit more expensive than most people would pay but the reason I got it is I could put my freeze dryer and my vacuum pump on the same cart side by side and I could keep this at the end of my uh, hallway but something has happened as you can clearly see the capacity for this cart is supposed to be 400 pounds well it may hold 400 pounds but over time we have a definite problem here one of the problems with the freeze dryer and the vacuum pump is not only do they give up give off a lot of heat which we're going to talk about in a moment they also give off a lot of vibration this plastic right here is not thermal set plastic but it's called this thermal plastic which means if you were to heat this up enough you could actually melt this cart back into oblivion and so with all the heat that this, these little appliances give off plus the vibration you can see that it has actually sagged so to correct this little problem we're going to have to put a board on top of this to help distribute the weight evenly to get rid of the sag so I have this piece of three quarter inch melamine in my garage so I cut it down rounded the corners to fit into the top and this will give me the extra support I need to keep my uh, cart from bowing and support everything much better than the original design here's another tip that I hope you will take into consideration even after you drain your oil I would suggest to leave your valve open and your pump tipped on a block even after several hours after I drained this oil I still have recovered not only some oil but if you can see down in there water that was still in my vacuum pump and if that water wouldn't have come out that water would have mixed with the new oil and you know that what they say oil and water they just don't mix we really need to keep water out of the oil as much as possible so I hope you take that into consideration four months ago I was doing a little experiment trying to see what the average volume of a tray of food would be uh, placed inside a one gallon bag so I used these little blue glass beads as simulated food so to speak so I filled up a tray and I put it into a bag and I sealed it up well here's the bag now okay so this was an oxygen test and I did this back on May 3rd uh, 2021 about four months ago so what we're going to do we're going to open this up and take take the oxygen absorber out of it put it on the bottom side of a mason jar so let's put it in water and we're going to see how many cc's of fluid the oxygen absorber inside of this will still suck up the reason I wanted to do this is what if you wanted to open up a bag of food take some of the food out with the oxygen absorber still have any life to it to where you could reseal the bag and go on your merry way or would you have to get a new absorber and put it inside the bag so we're going to go ahead and open this up and we're going to have to kind of be quick about it because I want to make it a fair test okay there's our oxygen absorber and guess what it still feels like flour this feels like a fresh oxygen absorber okay so we're going to take this and we're going to put it down here on the duct tape 
have this marked. This is a 300 cc, so this is 300 cc's of air, and this is 397, which is the total amount of oxygen that should be in this jar. This is our colored water. And you can see down inside, maybe, that there's no water underneath the jar. So the pressure in the jar right now is keeping the water from flowing in. So we're going to give this a couple of days and see what happens. It's the following day and we have maxed out on 397 cubic centimeters of air. So like we've done in the past, we're going to empty the jar. Change the air inside and we're going to start all over again. Well, I got about another 200 cc's on the oxygen absorber before it fell into the liquid. But basically, what I'm trying to prove is so far we pretty much got about another 600 cc's out of this oxygen absorber after we opened it up and removed it from the mylar bag. So basically you can probably reseal a bag at least once after opening it. Looks like I'm only going to be able to fill three of the four trays, so I'm going to have to find something else for the fourth tray. Now, as I've done in the past, I'm going to weigh these and make sure that they're all equal in weight so they finish at the same time. It doesn't make any sense to have a whole bunch of food of the same kind in this tray and a little food in this tray, this one gets done, but this one's not. It's just gonna it just wastes time and energy. Okay we have fifteen forty eight plus 15, 17 plus 15, 69 divide by 3. We need 15, 44 in each tray. So this is all done. Fifteen forty six, fifteen forty four, fifteen forty four, right on the money. Okay, so these three trays have the same type of food and the same weight. So I now have this tray, and what I'm going to do with this now, about a year ago, I compiled this list. From different websites and this basically this is water content. So if I go down this list to carrots it's telling me that carrots are 85 percent water and I think that's not surprising the human body is primarily water. So carrots are at 85 percent so if I go over here this will tell me what else is at 85 percent. So Okay, artichokes, apricots, plums, winter squash are also foods around 85%. Now I do have some apricots 
which are also at 86 percent. So if I put apricots in this tray and at 86 percent water and these are 85 percent water and if I put the same weight then everything will be done approximately at the same time. Now it wouldn't make any sense for example if I were to put say zucchini. Zucchini is 95 percent water so if I would put zucchini in this tray all these would get done and the zucchini still wouldn't be done. So what I'm suge suggesting is that when you freeze dry try to do either all the trays the same or the trays that have the similar water content. I think it will just be a lot more efficient by doing it that way. Hey this is Phil at 4800 feet. I've really enjoyed making these videos to the viewers of YouTube. My goal in doing so, if I can help anyone with any of their problems, I would love to share my knowledge with you guys and if I can help save a service call or make life a little bit easier, that's my goal. Whether it's freeze drying, making gluten free foods, raising chickens, or home and auto repair, I have a lot of knowledge I'd like to share with you guys. So check out my other channels and I appreciate the kind thoughts and comments and feedback I've received and I hope I can continue to serve and help and inform all you guys and even every now and then I've even learned something from the viewers so once again thank you very much give us a comment give us a like and I'll send you another video